Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick video on SIA maintenance and things that you really don't want to do to the SIA of your sword. So let's get started. The first thing that you really don't want to do with your SIA, and I've seen a few people on YouTube recommend this, is you don't want to shove things like cotton balls down your SIA to eliminate rattle. Sia rattle is something that is unfortunately quite common, especially in swords of lower price points. And some people try to shove cotton balls down in sayas in an attempt to eliminate that rattle. The problem comes in that when you do that, you are overriding something that's actually designed into the saya. And what you're overriding is that the saya is actually longer than the blade. The reason for this is because at the bottom there's a little reservoir for excess oil and moisture to drain down into. And that way you don't have this moisture sitting on your blade. Gravity will take it to the bottom of the saya. Well when you're filling this space with cotton balls, number one, those cotton balls are going to absorb that moisture. And now if you're using it to actually eliminate the rattle, now you have these cotton balls up against your sword and it can cause rusting. That's why I would not recommend shoving cotton balls down a saya or anything really, but uh, I heard cotton balls once and that's just a really bad idea. The best way I've found to actually eliminate saya rattle is cut the end of the saya off then fit a piece of wood into the saya that is a nice press fit. You don't want it too tight, otherwise you can actually split your saya. And then from there, you also want the piece of wood to follow the shape of the blade. And then once you establish that, what you do is you glue it in place and you make a new kojiri, which is the end cap to the saya. This one here is horn. Or if you have a metal one, you can put the metal Kojiri back on. This is a very in-depth modification that you better know what you're doing to do it or send it out to someone like me to do this kind of modification to your sword. The next mistake that is pretty common that people make is putting a wet or dirty blade back into the saya after cutting. And the problem with this is you are introducing dirt or moisture into your saya, and you don't want to do that. You want the inside of your saya to remain as dry as possible. You really want to wipe a blade off before putting it back in the saya, because the problem is once you get dirt or moisture into the saya, there's really not a way to get it back out. The only real good solution after that would be get a new saya. And the problem with that is there are places that sell pre-made saya and I don't recommend them because a saya really needs to be made to fit the blade. And quite frankly, that's pretty expensive to have done. And quite often exceeds the price of the actual sword. So I don't recommend putting a dirty or wet blade back into the saya so that you can avoid that. The next thing you really don't want to do is blowing compressed air into your saya. I've heard some people who have done this before in an attempt to blow out uh, usually wood shavings from using the sword or you know possibly any bits of dirt or anything else in there that they think could be in there. The reason why this is a bad idea is because a lot of air compressors actually gather moisture in them. This is the reason why they have a drain to be able to drain that moisture out. Well, the problem that comes in is if you're using that to blow air into the saya, you are now blowing moisture into your saya at high pressure. And introducing moisture to the saya. So you really don't want to do that. My former instructor once told me of someone who actually did this 
And what ended up happening is their sword ended up completely rusting as a result of it. So you really don't want to be blowing compressed air into your Saya. If you feel the need to try to get out any loose wood shavings or anything else that is in your Saya, the best way to do it is take the sword out of the Saya, set it aside, and then take your Saya, hold it in one hand with the opening of the Saya facing the ground, and just tap it on the palm of your hand. You don't have to hit very hard, just tap a little bit, and if there is any loose wood shavings, it will come out. You can also do this on your leg. And if there are any loose wood shavings, that is a very good way to get them out without blowing compressed air into your Saya or being really abusive to your Saya. The next thing that you really don't want to do is don't pour things like tongue oil down your Saya. It's not needed. And in all actuality, it can actually ruin your Saya. Additionally, you don't want to be using things like olive oil on the blade of your sword. The reason why you don't want to be using things like olive oil is because once you put the olive oil on the blade of your sword, once you put the sword back in the Saya, that oil can and will be absorbed by the Saya. And once it absorbs, the problem is eventually it will end up going rancid and eventually you will end up ruining your Saya. And the truth can also be said for things like vegetable oil as well. Also, you don't want to be putting things like grease onto the blade of your sword because again, once you put that grease on the blade and you put the blade back into the Saya, you're introducing that grease to the Saya. So you really don't want to do that either. And the same can be said for waxes as well. The only oils you really want to use on your sword are things like choji oil, because obviously choji oil is made for swords. You can also use mineral oil. You can also make your own choji oil by mixing some clove in with some mineral oil. Or there are other oils that you can use. Uh, we're not going to go too much into all of the different oils that can be used, but you do have quite a few options in the ways of acceptable oils for swords. The main thing is when you are choosing an oil, Number one, you don't want some kind of an organic oil that can go rancid like olive oil or vegetable oil. And the other thing is you don't want any water in that oil. But either way, I would say personally, don't get too creative with your oils. There's no reason to do it. Choji oil, once you buy it, will last you quite a long time. Mineral oil is readily available enough and, you know, plenty affordable that, again, you don't need to get too creative. Or, as I mentioned, you can make your own choji oil with some mineral oil with a very small amount of clove. The last thing I'm going to mention that you really don't want to do is using sandpaper to adjust the tension on your Saya. I've even heard of some people who wrap a file in sandpaper, which to me didn't make any sense at all. The problem with using sandpaper is when you are adjusting the Saya with sandpaper, you are using an abrasive paper and that abrasive can break loose of the paper. So now you have abrasive in your Saya and it can end up scratching up your blade. I even saw a video of someone once who bought a brand new sword and then they adjusted the fit of the Saya with sandpaper and next thing you know in the video they're complaining that their blade is getting scratched. 
And that's the reason why, is because the abrasive broke loose of the paper and ended up scratching the blade. And the problem is, once that happens, there's really not much you can do about it because the abrasive can actually end up getting stuck to the wood. And once that happens, there's nothing you can do to get it back out, really. Once that happens, your Saya is, for the most part, ruined. I mean, obviously, it still functions as a Saya, but your blade is going to continue getting scratched, and it can eventually ruin your polish. So if you need to adjust the fit on a Saya because it's just not coming out of the Saya easy, what you can do, and this is exactly what I recommend, is use a clean file to adjust it. You don't want to use a file that has grease or something on it to adjust the fit of your Saya. Everything that I've mentioned here also applies to other swords as well especially swords with wooden cores. So that's pretty much it. That is basic maintenance on the Saya of a Japanese sword. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!